One article that really caught our attention and that we're going to analyze in depth is the one from Thornton and others called Assessing the Umbrella Value of a Range-Wide Conservation Network for Jaguars. This paper tries to find an answer to the queries regarding the uncertainty surrounding the umbrella species strategies. Moreover, there is also another very interesting article which ideas builds upon the concept of umbrella species. This article is by David Bone and it's titled What would happen to the trees and lianas if apes disappear? After we introduce the concept of umbrella species, it's inevitable that another question arises, which is, how is an umbrella species chosen? There are different conditions that need to be met in order to fall within the umbrella species selection. Large area requirements that cover multiple habitat types, specialized habitat needs that encompasses the ones from coexisting species, and the quality and type of the habitat that the species falls within. The majority of the animals which respect these conditions, thus are eligible for becoming an umbrella species, are large carnivores due to their substantial needs for large areas and sensitivity to human disturbance. Since now the basic concepts about umbrella species are explained, we can now proceed to the explanation of the case study of Thornton et al.'s paper. This case study is an assessment of the potential umbrella effectiveness of a conservation network designed to meet the needs of a single species, the jaguar. This range-wide network extends from Mexico in the north to Argentina in the south and consists of viable jaguar populations and jaguar movement corridors that connect these populations. Jaguar populations are often indicated through the use of Jaguar Conservation Units, or JCUs. JCUs are basically defined as area with stable prey community of a population of at least 50 breeding jaguars and areas with fewer than 50 breeding jaguars but with sufficient habitat and prey base such as the jaguar population can increase under favorable conditions. Another important factor is the species corridor, which makes it possible to track the movements of jaguars. The movements can help assess which is the corridor that has the lowest cost of movement for the species, but the highest probability of survival. The determined corridor can then be used to focus conservation efforts for the umbrella species. Now it's time to answer another question. What is the methodology behind this case study? But in order to explain properly and clearly the complex methods used, we invited a very special guest. It's nonetheless the author of the article that we are discussing right now, Daniel Thornton.